This is a piece of metal that has been cut so perfectly that you can't even see that there are actually three separate pieces here. This part was made using a process called wire EDM. With this technique, you can machine parts to within five thousandths of a millimeter. This cube is called the Metmo cube. At the bottom, there's a small connection so that the pressure on both sides is the same. So if I push one piece down, it pops up the other. When I flip the cube over, the two moving pieces want to fall out, but the atmosphere keeps them in because in order to fall out, it has to open up a space below it. Since there's no good way for air to get into this space, the pressure on the outside is greater than the pressure on the inside, so it keeps the piece in. However, because there is a slightly lower pressure inside under the moving piece, air slowly makes its way around the microscopic gap and equalizes the pressure until the piece falls out. Also, when I turn it back over, the opposite happens. The pressure increases on the inside and holds up the pieces until eventually the air can get out of these tiny little gaps and the piece slowly falls. You can see that if I don't have the other piece in there, there's no slow movement. It just slides right in and falls right out. So the reason that it falls slowly is because the air has to rush in through this minuscule gap around the edges here. So that made me have a question. What would happen if this were done in a vacuum chamber? Will the pieces still fall slowly into their slots at very low pressures, or will it just fall quickly like it did when I didn't have the other piece in here when airflow wasn't an issue? The answer might be a bit surprising. So make your guess on what you think will happen in the comments section right now. So to do this in the vacuum chamber, first I have to figure out a way to flip this over in the vacuum. What I've done is take a turntable and tape the cube in the middle here. And then I have a strong magnet on top and I can turn the wheel by turning the magnet on the outside. So first let's do it in air and see what it looks like when I flip it over and then flip it back. You can see it looks about as expected. The pieces move relatively slowly and once they're out and I flip it back up, it takes a while to slide back into place. But now let's drop the pressure in this big vacuum chamber. Okay, so now we're gonna close this up and see what happens when it's under vacuum. We're going to get to less than 0.05 atmospheres. So the air pressure is now 20 times less than normal atmospheric pressure. Okay, let's turn it upside down. What? <laughs> Wait, they fall out fast initially, but then they slow down. And when I turn it back upright, they fall in fast, but then for the last little bit, they slide in at about the same rate as they slid in before. Let's try this again. So when we turn it upside down, the pieces fall out easier at first because there's less pressure outside to push against them. But in doing so, this creates a vacuum in the gap under the moving piece that's now a greater vacuum than the outside vacuum. So the very thin air from the outside moves into the gap. Then when I flip it upright, there's a little bit higher pressure on the inside than the outside, so that little bit of air has to escape through the tiny gaps before it can fall all the way down. But what's weird about this is that even though the pressure on the inside is slightly higher than the outside, it's still a very low pressure, less than 0.05 atmospheres. But that very thin air has just as hard of a time escaping through the gaps as when it was at a pressure of one atmosphere. So it seems like squeezing air through a small space is just as hard at low pressure as at high pressure. This is weird. This would mean that the viscosity of air is about the same at high and low pressures. So then we should ask, what does the viscosity of air look like with a change in pressure? Well, if we start off at a very high pressure, many atmospheres of pressure, and then start decreasing the pressure, the viscosity decreases. The air is getting thinner, so the viscosity decreases as expected. But then something interesting happens. Once we're below about 50 atmospheres, the viscosity starts to flatten out, and it stays about the same all the way until we reach extremely low pressures. It bottoms out here at about 0.0441. That means that the air's resistance to flow is the same even though its density is orders of magnitude less. I can show this in a different way if I use a syringe. At the end of the syringe, I'll restrict the airflow by putting it on a very small needle. So now it's really hard to push the air out. Then I'll put a heavy weight on the syringe to push it down. Let's see if the rate that the syringe empties is the same atmospheric pressure versus in a vacuum. Also, I wanna show you that we're not limited by the friction of the syringe here. 
So if I take off this needle that's causing the restricted flow, watch how fast it can fall. So it falls very fast. So we're not restricted by the friction of the syringe itself. Then when we put the needle on, you can see that it falls at this rate. If we wait for it to get to the bottom where it's most stable, based on the markings on the syringe, we can see it falls at around 1.05 milliliters per second. But now let's put it in the vacuum chamber. I have this string holding it up right now. I'm gonna cut it with my laser. Okay, we're at full vacuum now. Let's cut the string. There we go. So it initially fell faster, but then once it got to its steady state, it fell at about the same rate. If we look at its speed from 20 to 10 milliliters, it falls at the exact same rate, around 1.05 milliliters per second. If we look at both of them side by side, it's amazing how they fall at about the exact same rate, even though there's almost an entire atmosphere difference between the two pressures in the syringe. So why would the viscosity of air stay the same even when the density is so much lower? Well, it's because the viscosity is mainly dependent on how easily gas molecules can slip past each other and the walls of the container. At any moderate pressure, the ability to slide past each other doesn't change significantly. This surprised me. At first, I assumed that when I stuck it in the vacuum chamber, they'd just fall right out like nothing was there. But I forgot that the viscosity of air is the thing that's making it so difficult to compress down or stretch out. So did you guess right what was going to happen? And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab, and we'll see you next time.